Hello everyone, this is a video about helping people go back to their driving test after a ban of driving and this is an interesting subject because people who may have been banned for any reason, it doesn't have to be particularly negative which I know that your mind probably may jump to straight away but you can get banned for so many different reasons, you know, um, the point system on your driving license for example in the first two years you're only allowed six points um, when you go through a red light that's three points if you break the speed limit that's three points if you drive without insurance that's nine points um, if you don't have the correct tire tread depth on your tires that's three points for every tire so you can lose your license just from the conditions of your tires um, you could have diabetes the doctor could have signed you off for any any health reasons to do with your eyes um, there's so many drinking alcohol uh, drugs of course um, and look there's lots of different reasons why somebody may have a ban um, and over the years with my 20 years experience this is a video to help those people who are coming back to their driving test after such a long time if you are going back to your driving test after a ban you're going to have to do your theory again and um, and under unless there's um, circumstances it, it's it, most of the time you have to do your theory um, and then you have to do your driving test again so you're going to have to study for that and go through the whole process when you go back to your driving test after a ban it can't it's not always necessarily a good thing having all of this experience because people can really worry because they've been driving for so many years 20 30 40 years and they've got their their way of driving and sometimes these people panic um, because they think oh god you know all my bad habits so in a nutshell if I was to meet somebody who had been banned from driving and I need to take them out for a driving lesson the immediate things that come up even before I've even met this person would be what are their speed limits like yeah so driving uh, identifying that a road is 30 miles an hour so if there's um, street lamps on a residential area so lots of people living there lots of houses um, if it's street lamps and houses you're in a 30 unless it's otherwise stated otherwise stated means that every 15 seconds you'd have another um, speed sign like on the traffic lights uh, lamppost sorry as you come up so maybe 20 40 50. A road cannot look like a 20, 40 or 50, that it would be signed every 15 seconds. So a road can look like a 30 because it's lamppost and houses and a road can look like a 60 because that's a country road with no lampposts. So normally if you're on a road where the sheep and the pigs live on the left and the right, you're going to be on a 60 mile an hour road. And then a road can look like a 70 because that's a dual carriageway or motorway. Dual carriageway meaning that you've got something in the middle of the road that separates you from the oncoming people, um, like grass, a crash barrier, something like that. If you've got that grass and crash barrier in between you two with the oncoming people, that means you can do 10 miles an hour extra with the national speed limit sign. Remembering that the national speed limit sign is a round white sign which denotes a lamppost and the black line means no more lampposts, right? Um, so that's, uh, I think her name was Elizabeth, the people, the person who made all the signs. So that was her, uh, her way of, of saying no more lampposts. Where was I? So <clears throat> when you're, um, yeah, so if you're um, a, a person who's coming back to driving, I would be worried about like this person's speed. Are they breaking the speed limit? Do they know how to identify the speed of the roads that they're on. Also, I'd be very interested to see how strict they are with coming down from a speed limit. So say for instance, they're at 60 and then they're going into a 30. I would be interested to see if they're checking their mirrors before they slow down. And then I would be interested to see if they hit the mark of 30 before they go uh, through that sign of 30 and vice versa if they have a faster speed limit in front of them I would be interested to see if they're magnetized towards the sign which they shouldn't be they should stay at a rigid 30 if they're in a 30 and then they should only do 60 after that sign um, very important so try not to be magnetized towards the sign and go faster and faster towards it because <clears throat> you're breaking the speed limit I always let's say to my students, it's like having a net in front of you. Make sure that when you get to that net, you're either like accelerating to go faster if it's safe to do so, or you've slowed down to enter that area of 30 afterwards. So speed limits, I'd be very interested to see what the, um, the band student, um, how they drive with speed limits. 
On the driving test, um, if a band student hasn't had a lot of um, instruction from a driving instructor, they tend to uh, like underplay their speed. They tend to go quite slowly everywhere because they're really frightened. So a lot of people can fail for going too slow on their driving tests um, after a band because they're just really frightened about speed all of a sudden. Um, it is important that if you can make progress that you should only go slow when you need to and pick up your speed and make progress when you can. Um, the other thing that I would be very interested in is what their yellow box junction um, uh, identi like if they can actually identify that there's a yellow box coming up and all of the rules coming up with a yellow box junction uh, crossroads. <clears throat> Remember that you can stop in a yellow box to turn right at a crossroads if your exit is clear. I have made a very um, good video on here on my YouTube about that. So if you're unaware of what the yellow box junctions uh, rules are, then please go to that. Um, it is a good video with lots of information on it. The reason why you go into a crossroads to turn right if there's a yellow box, if your exit is clear, is so the person behind you can go left and straight on so you don't um, cause a traffic jam. Um, other things that I'd be worried about for somebody who's um, had a ban from driving and they're going back to the driving test is where they look when they reverse. Um, lots of people use their mirrors when they reverse or they use their cameras um, to reverse and they get out of the habit of looking over their left shoulder to look out the back window. It is very important that you look out the back window when you're reversing um, to be able to use your peripheral view of how your eyes work. If you just look in the mirror out the back, you've got a very tunnel vision of what's just behind you. If you look over your shoulder, then you can peripherally see to the left and the right um, people walking around and uh, you can see a way better on your driving test the examiner does not accept mirror checks as a check to be out the window you will fail for that it is very important that you look out the back you can utilize your your mirrors like you can utilize them and you can use them for reference points if you've been given reference points by your driving instructor or you use them anyway in your mirrors um but looking out the back window is to check for people directly behind you and to make sure that there's no one there. If I said to my students, OK, as we're driving forward, I would like you now to close your eyes for 30 seconds or I'd like you to look out the back window as you're driving forward for the next 30 seconds. People would think I was insane. Uh, but when you're going backwards, it seems to be that um, looking forwards is OK for people um, or it's basically just driving blind. So you must look out the back window when you've put it into reverse. And when you're going forward, you must look forward most of the time. Let me think what else could come up for um, people who have um, had their license for a long time. Selecting the gears, I would be interested in people if they're using the correct gear thing for things. Oh, steering. Um, don't worry about your steering. Like you hear about pull, pull push steering and stuff like that. Um, I would not be correcting somebody's steering if they've had a band from driving. Um, if they cross their hands and stuff, that's totally fine. Um, it's basically about very, very good position. Um, even even a learner student, if you turn and you cross your hands, yeah, that's the, you know. Do you know what? It's okay. The pull push steering technique is a preferred technique that the examiner likes to see. But if your position is absolutely immaculate every time you turn left, every time you turn right, every time you do whatever you're doing. Uh, he doesn't really care about your position, your hand position on the roundabout, oh, on the steering wheel. The only thing that he will worry about is if you let go of the steering wheel and it's steering slips to go back to normal. You can't take your hands off the steering wheel and let the steering wheel correct itself and go back to normal. Because if you hit a pothole or something like that, your your car is available to go wherever the pothole want, wants to go. It's very important that you hold the steering wheel. The examiner is going to want you to hold the steering wheel properly. So it's a 10 to 2 position or a quarter to 3 position with your hand position, just like a, lot, a clock face. So that is going to be wanted. I did have someone fail once. Um, they, they'd failed for something else already by this time, but then they gave up and they just held the steering wheel at six o'clock because they just couldn't be bothered with the rest of the test they got an extra fail for that as well but they'd already failed they just gave up at this stage so holding the steering wheel correctly and then making sure that you've got control of it when you bring it back round is okay but crossing uh, crossing the hands is totally fine but steer you know steering with this pull push you won't have to relearn that so don't worry so those are my top tips for people who have been banned, who are coming back from driving. Um, these uh, tips can help people who are coming from other countries as well. Um, uh, an American springs to mind um, with all these that I taught years and years ago. Um, so, yeah.
it can help people who have been driving in it in a foreign country as well. All right, so I hope that helps and I'll speak to you soon.